at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Santa Fe. Our congregation was established in 1893 as the Spanish-speaking Presbyterian congregation in Santa Fe, and we continue to honor our language tradition by worshiping bilingually. If you need translations from Spanish to English, you can find them in the bulletin, which is located in the description box below this video. During this time of COVID, the church building is closed, but we continue to be the church, worshiping God together. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia de Westminster Presbyterian en Santa Fe. Nuestra congregación se estableció en 1893 como la Iglesia Presbyteriana Hispanohablante en Santa Fe. Y continuamos hablando bilingües. Si necesita traducciones del inglés al español, puede encontrarlas en el boletín ubicado en el cuadro de descripción debajo de este video. Durante este tiempo de COVID, el edificio de la iglesia está cerrado, pero seguimos siendo la iglesia, orando a Dios juntos en línea. I invite you to worship with us online Wednesday, January 6th to celebrate Epiphany and the arrival of the Magi. Los invito a Venir a adorar con nosotros en Linea en el miércoles el 6 de enero para celebrar la Epifanía y la llegada de los magos. Y ahora, este es el día que hizo el Señor. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The prophet Jeremiah cries out, God is gathering all the peoples from the north and the south and the east and the west. God is gathering us home with comfort and joy. We are gathered together with joy and singing for God is bringing us home. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Si decimos que no tenemos pecado, nos engañamos a nosotros mismos, y la verdad no está en nosotros. Si confesamos nuestros pecados, Dios es justo para perdonar nuestros pecados y limpiarnos de todo maldad. Con confianza en la misericordia de Dios, confesamos nuestros pecados. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Cualquiera que está en Cristo, nueva criatura es. El pasado ha quedado atrás. Todo vuelve a ser puro y nuevo. Beloved, believe in the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen.
Dios Santo, por el poder de tu Espíritu, revelanos hoy tu voluntad a través de tu palabra leída y proclamada. Ayúdanos a entender tu obra creadora, redentora y consoladora, y conducenos al mundo en la abundancia de tu Espíritu, a proclamar, bautizar y enseñar en el nombre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. La lectura se encuentra en San Juan, capítulo 1, versos 1 hasta 18. En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. Este era en el principio con Dios. Todas las cosas por él fueron hechas, y sin él nada de lo que ha sido hecho fue hecho. En él estaba, estaba la vida, y la vida era la luz de los hombres. La luz en las tinieblas resplandece, y las tinieblas no prevalecieron contra ella. Hubo un hombre enviado de Dios, el cual se llamaba Juan. Este vino por testimonio para que diese testimonio de la luz a fin de, lo, de que todos creyesen por él. No era él la luz, sino para que diese testimonio de la luz. Aquella luz verdadera que alumbra a todo hombre venía a este mundo. En el mundo estaba, y el mundo por él fue hecho, pero el mundo no le conoció. A lo suyo vino, y los suyos no le recibieron. Mas a todos los que recibieron, a los que creen en su nombre, les dio potestad de ser hechos hijos de Dios, los cuales no son engendra engendrados de sangre, ni de voluntad de carne, ni de voluntad de varón, sino de Dios. Y aquel verbo fue hecho carne, y habitó entre nosotros, y vimos su gloria, gloria como del ungénito del Padre, lleno de gracia y de verdad. Juan dio testimonio de él, y clamó diciendo, Este es de quien yo decía, El que viene después de mí es antes de mí, porque era primero que yo, porque de su plenitud tomamos todos y gracia sobre gracia. Pues la ley por medio de Moisés fue dada, pero la gracia y la verdad vinieron por medio de Jesucristo. A Dios nadie le vio jamás, el ungénito Hijo, que está en el seno de Padre. Él le ha dado a conocer. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In April of 2005, the Minneapolis Institute of Art hosted an exhibition called Illuminating the Word. Illuminating the Word displayed pages from the St. John's Bible, an illuminated Bible commissioned by the St. John's University in Abbey in Collegeville, Minnesota. The St. John's Bible has been described by some as the American Book of Kells, which as a high schooler meant next to nothing to me. It is a traditional illuminated manuscript in many ways, ink on calfskin vellum, handwritten, hand illuminated, yet the calligrapher and artistic director, Donald Jackson, also pulled from very modern sources and the illustrations and colors are vivid and striking. I put a link to a virtual viewing of the St. John's Bible in the description box below, and I invite you all to take a look. I visited that exhibit at the Minneapolis Institute of Art, though I don't remember who brought me or why I was there. What I do remember is how hushed the gallery space was, the way the silence felt heavy and expectant and deeper somehow than the normal museum quiet. All the visitors moved slowly and we all took our time. And I remember being transfixed by the pages I saw displayed before me. And in particular, the frontispiece for the Gospel of John. A figure in gold leaf appears almost to float above a wash of the galaxy and surrounding the figure in gold it reads, and the word became flesh and lived among us, Christ, stepping out of the galaxy into the world, limbed in gold. This is what it means for the word to be made flesh. We can begin to capture it on paper or calfskin vellum. This is what John's Gospel reminds us of, that God, present in the beginning of all things and before the beginning of all things, became flesh and lived among us. John's Gospel, more than any other, gets at the mystery at the heart of our faith. Somehow, God remained God and yet also became one of us and chose to live with us, like us, as us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, Y el verbo era Dios. En arte en holobos cae holobos en proston theon, cae theos en holobos. Logos is a hard word to translate. It's a good example of why many people prefer to 
refer to biblical interpretation rather than biblical translation. Because logos, like so many others, defies a simple one-to-one -one translation. One translation is, of course, word, and it's probably the best translation we have. But logos carries with it the connotation of conversation, of movement, of idea. It's not simply a grammatical descriptor. In La Reina Valera edition of the Bible from 1960, logos is translated verbal, verb in English. And while later editions of La Reina Valera use palabra as does Dios habla hoy, I'm partial to verbal. Because it's one of the first things we learn when we learn our grammar. Verbs are action words. Nouns identify. Verbs do. And I realize that this may seem like a long grammatical sidebar, but the truth is how we translate is deeply connected to how we interpret. There's more to the words on the page than simple translation. For example, Genesis 1-1 mimics John 1-1. They both begin in the New Revised Standard Version, in the beginning. But I can tell you right now that the Hebrew word used first in Genesis bears little to no resemblance to the English phrase, in the beginning. I could go on, but then that would, in fact, be a sidebar. This is why it's good for us to read scholarly accepted translations and to read many of them. What we learn from them is that the same phrase in Greek or in Hebrew can be rendered many ways in English, and each one means something slightly or very different. So what does it mean for logos to be held as verbal and as word? It gives us a broader picture of what God is doing in the world. God is in conversation with the world. God is active in the world. God is present in the world. And it reminds us of the mystery of God with us. We don't have language to describe the fullness of what God is doing. It's easy to look at words printed on a page and dismiss them as static and unchanging. It's hard to see words as active participants in what God is doing in the world, even when we hold those very words sacred. Our Protestant Bibles are words on a page with very little elaboration. Our sanctuaries are plain. We prize education and intellect and in our headness. And there is something to be said for the austerity of those original Reformation goals. It was a reaction against the ways the wealth and power in the church have become too interconnected, the way our Reformation foreparents believed we had lost sight of who we were worshiping. So now we do not get dazzled by gold plating. Incense does not fill our noses. Our Bibles are printed in black and white and maybe a little red. Art remains outside the sanctuary, and the Word is central to our worship. And yet, and yet somehow and all too often when we strip away all of the color and scent and sound to get at that central Word, we are left with plain ink on the page, and none of the mystery. The word becomes words, and logos disappears. This, I think, is why we are seeing the Protestant church come back to art, come back to using all our senses when we worship. 
We Presbyterians believe strongly in the power of proclamation, but we have come to view proclamation as solely an intellectual exercise. Somehow the power of proclamation through the arts, through music or dance or sculpture or painting or architecture, it all got lost. In education, teachers and parents talk about visual learners, kinesthetic learners, oral learners. There are many, many ways to experience and learn about the world. And what I have learned is that when I only use my head to worship, I miss out on the mystery and the wonder. To glimpse the mystery of faith, I need all of the senses God has given me. And one of the ways I can get a glimpse of the mystery, it turns out, is through the pages of an illuminated manuscript. In one page, through words and image, Jackson and his assistants captured a fuller picture of the mystery of Logos than I have ever managed on my own. On that one page, I can see the true light coming into the world. I can see the glory, and I can see that God is indeed flesh. In the beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made God known. God comes down to be with us and still remains beyond all that we can imagine, greater and grander than any human language we can speak. And yet God, too, becomes human and lives among us, and so we know God. We know Jesus, and this is the gift of Christmas that the word became flesh and lived among us. Thanks be to God. Amen. and lived among us and ate as one of us and so we celebrate the meal that God once ate in an upper room. Hermanas y hermanos, la familia de Dios. Esta es la fiesta jubilosa del pueblo de Dios. Mujeres, hombres, jóvenes, niños y niñas, que venga todo el mundo. Las escrituras dicen que la gente vendrá del norte y del sur, del este y del oeste, para sentarse a comer en el reino de Dios. Esta es la mesa del Señor. 
Cristo nuestro Señor invita a su mesa a quienes le aman. Venga a la fiesta que el Señor ha preparado. Let us pray. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God. All your works, the height and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light, night withdrew and creation dawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth and life appeared. When times at last had ripened and the earth grown full in abundance, you created in your image man and woman, the stewards of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that all the living might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation you call good. So now, with all the powers of heaven and earth, we sing the ageless hymn of your glory. Santo, 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 Señor, Dios Todopoderoso. Llenos están los cielos y la tierra de su gloria. Osana en las alturas. Bendito sea el que viene en el nombre del Señor. Osana en las alturas. All holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them, you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick. Though he himself would suffer, he offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, given for you. When the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we commemorate Jesus, your Son. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. Cristo ha muerto. Cristo ha resucitado. Cristo vendrá otra vez. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then, at last, all peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation, we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Con la certeza de ser hijos y hijas de Dios, oramos. Padre nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo, así también en la tierra. El pan nuestro de cada día. Danos lo hoy. Y perdonanos nuestros deudas como también perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos deje caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. Jesús dijo: Yo soy el pan de vida.
Jesús dijo, Yo soy la vid, ustedes las ramas. Quien a mí viene nunca tendrá hambre, y quien en mí cree no tendrá sed jamás. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The feast is ready. Thanks be to God. of the justice, righteousness, and peace of your promised new creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we seek to serve your holy realm. Lead us to live in joyful expectation of the coming again in glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak, heal the afflicted, honor and encourage all people, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you or with those who are far from you. Send a text message, write an email, give them a phone call. Let them know that you are thinking of them and that God loves them. Thank you.